It was just another hot summer's day. I was watching Geometry Dash videos to pass the time, when I saw this comic by Typeer that mentioned that he was compiling a 60Hz demon list. And that's where it all began. Let's return to the story. After reading this comment by type here, it took a bit of digging, but I eventually found his demon list that he was talking about for 60 Hz players, and it was pretty neat. I was impressed by how clean and sleek it looked, and I was also impressed by the fact that it was able to collect so many records from so many players for over 100 levels on the list, but it did have its problems. For those of you who are particularly observant, you may have noticed that if you check the URL, this website is actually hosted on a Google site, and that's where most of these problems stem from. It's a little bit more complicated than this, but the gist of it is that Google Sites does not support scripting. Because Google Sites does not support scripting, everything has to be done manually. What does this mean? Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to add a new daemon at position number one. Well, when you do this, well, that's simple enough, but then every demon that is below that demon has to be renumbered, and this is a huge waste of time, especially considering you have to do this every single time you add a new demon. And don't even get me started on making a leaderboard. After all, every time a demon gets moved or placed, you'd have to change every player's point numbers. Somehow the mobilist actually is able to do this, and huge props to them, but this is not something we are going to do. Also worth mentioning, even though this is more of a minor problem, is that on mobile devices, the website tends to crash a lot. So clearly, the list website had a lot of things to improve on, but these things weren't fixable because it was running on a Google site. But what if I could fix everything, is what I thought to myself in July. And so, despite knowing nothing about web development or what I was about to get myself into, I began working. Okay, so before we implemented anything, we had to get our own website first. This took an embarrassingly long two days for me to figure out that all I had to do was go to an online domain service, get a domain, and then get the web host, and then get it all up and running. But eventually, I did figure it out, and I uploaded my first file. And now the website was live. This is what it will look like. It'll look better in the future, I promised. But at this point, I was just focused on getting something functionally ready. Looking nice was not the priority here, I just needed something. And something is exactly what I did. To get a bare bones version of the site up and running, I first had to copy over the daemon lists and all of the records from the Google site. There was probably a better way to do this, but the way I chose was to painstakingly copy each and every daemon and all of their records individually, and gather them all into one text file, which my C++ scripts would process and convert into a giant HTML file. Then, I would copy over this giant HTML file onto the website, and boom, there was a list, copied successfully. Of course, in real time, this process took like several days of just boring copy and pasting, so yeah. Fun. Well, on the bright side, since the C++ is generating all of the HTML for the demons list for me, I had technically already solved the renumbering problem, so you know, silver lining. Anyway, now that the site was displaying all of the demons properly, it was time to start working on some upgrades, aka some new features. The first thing I tackled was the old leaderboard, which had been abandoned for over a month at this point. Um, this one's similar to the demon list process. Using the copy text file that contained every record and every level on the list, I used C++ data and file processing to associate player names with records. Then, using this equation, that makes no logical sense and its only goal was to make number 1 worth several times as much points as number 20, to determine the value of each list daemon and some C++ math functions, I calculated the sum of each player's completion scores and ranked them based on that. Once again, the C++ would output all of the data as one gigantic HTML file, which I would then copy over onto the site. This obviously isn't a great system, especially considering that every time the leaderboards have to be refreshed, I have to generate a new HTML file and then copy-paste that over onto the site, but it was good enough for a temporary hotfix, and we would fix this issue very soon. 
So that was the leaderboard, basically, until I had the idea of implementing weighted scores. But Ryan, what's weighted scores, I hear you asking? Well, to put it simply, instead of calculating your rank score via a sum of all your individual scores, you know, the score of your demons that you beat, it assigns an arbitrary weight to each of your completions based on how hard they are, reduces them based on that weight, and then takes a sum of all your reduced scores. For any of you that play OSU, you'll notice this sounds similar to the OSU PPV2 weighting system. That's because this is the OSU PPV2 weighting system. Okay, well the equation is slightly different, but functionally it's the same. Did all of that go over your head just now? That's fine. Just know that it basically makes your hardest completions worth way more than your other completions. Head on over to the LLR knowledge base for a more detailed explanation if you want. But why would you do this, I hear you asking now. Yeah, I know Pointer Cray and literally every other list with leaderboard, they don't do anything remotely similar to this. So this might not make much sense to you, but hear me out. In a nutshell, it's to prevent people like Lukeolizer or Enswish getting 5,555 points. Okay, well, all jokes aside, this is to prevent people from farming points off of the lower list demons. And it's to reward people for getting more difficult achievements overall. You know, rewarding people by skill rather than how much time they have to grind easy and mid-tier extreme demons. Okay, with the leaderboard out of the way, and also recall that at the very beginning I solved the renumbering problem, it's now time to solve the final problem of the old list, which was that it crashed phones. A lot. Why? Well, it's easier if I just show you. This is your phone. This is the site. Whenever your phone, or any device for that matter, accesses the site, it sends a request to the server for all of the information that it needs to get. If you're accessing the About page, for example, it requests all of the CSS, HTML, text, fonts, and scripts from the server, which is then displayed on the web page. That display is what you see. Now, if you access any of the daemon list pages, it has to request all of that info from the server again, and that's not too big of a deal. What is a big deal is having to request, download, and display 50 YouTube videos on top of that. This, best case, will take forever to load, and even on PCs it generally takes a really long time to load, and for lower end devices and phones it generally just crashes. So yeah. Out of the three problems, this was the trickiest to solve, and I didn't figure it out right away. And just when I was on the cusp of figuring out something with the app media tag, BAM! I got hit with a C++ course that, along with the pre-calculus course that I was already doing, ended up taking all of my time for two weeks and forced me to hit pause on site development. Two weeks later, and we're now in the middle of August. At this point, my pre-calculus and C++ course is both finished, which was really cool since that freed up my days again. Unfortunately, after these courses ended, I only had four days until school would start again, so I really needed to maximize each day because I knew that as soon as school started, the site development would be limited to mainly weekends, and thus would slow down again. At this point though, the one lead with the app media tag that I had wouldn't lead anywhere, and so I was stuck on how to fix the mobile optimization problem. Desperate to make progress, I reached out to my guardian angel, Jack, over on Discord for some help. He was happy to help, and not only did he help, he redesigned the entire site using JavaScript. But before I explain to you what JavaScript is and what it does, let me introduce you to Jack first. Jack is one of my friends in real life, and he's a pretty smart dude. More importantly though, he's already made websites in the past, which is why I reached out to him specifically. Okay, with that out of the way, let me explain to you what JavaScript does. So remember how my site was running on HTML files that were being generated by C++? Well, say goodbye to that, because JavaScript takes care of all that for you. What's so special about JavaScript, you wonder? Well, for the purposes of the site, it does a pretty similar job to C++. But instead of outputting HTML files that I have to physically copy over onto the site, it, it, it itself outputs HTML directly into the HTML file that is already on the website. This means that, so long as all your data is up to date, all of your HTML files will refresh themselves, which means that you, or me in this case, no longer have to copy and paste the files to keep the pages updated. Now, this sounds really cool, right? 
After all, it would seem that JavaScript would completely automate my site, and you would think that this magical coding thing would take a really long time to implement. But no, Jack completely redesigned my site into JavaScript in just four days. This meant that after just four days, my entire site was now completely copy and paste free, and all the backend was replaced from C++ to JavaScript. Oh, and because he's extra nice, he gave a major upgrade to the aesthetics of the site as well. This was done using some online CSS source files, which he integrated into my website. But these massive contributions saved me a crap ton of time, effort, and pain, so a huge thank you to him for doing all of this. Now that the website was completely automatic, you would think that I wouldn't have much to do and the site would be pretty much finished and would be completely finished very soon, right? Well, and for those of you who are extra observant, you may have noticed this. At the beginning of this segment, I said that I had four days left to, until school started, and Jack took four days to revamp the site into JavaScript and make it look better. See where I'm going with this? This means that as soon as Jack and I finished our JavaScriptification of the site, school had officially started again, which means the site development would now slow down because I was restricted to the weekends. But I carried on regardless, because, you know, you can't just give up on something just because another something pops up in your life. Okay, that's enough about my life, let's get back into it. The next weekend, August 23rd, I thought that the leaderboards were looking a little bare, so I spiced things up by making each player a clickable hyperlink that would trigger a pop-up to load. This pop-up would contain some extra information about the player, such as what demons they've completed, and later on, what levels they had progress on, and of course, all of the entries were ordered by difficulty. The code for setting up the pop-ups was taken from the GD Shitty List repository, so thanks to them for this one. Besides setting that up, everything else was pretty straightforward. Another week passes, and I finally now remember that mobile optimizations were a thing. Okay, well more precisely, at this point, I wanted to embed the videos onto the site, and then I remembered that I had to do it in a way that would crash phones. It quickly dawned on me that the point of crate list literally had all the videos embedded and it didn't crash. And then I realized that the point of crate list didn't have 100 videos, but rather 100 images, with each one leading to a video if clicked on, which is a lot more manageable for a device. I wanted to do the same thing, so using the inspect element button, I copied over a bunch of code from point of crate, and after fit some fiddling around, pretty quickly got it to work. I straight up copied Stardust for this one, so big thanks to him for making it so easily accessible and allowing me to use it. Now, going into September, this team decided that we would now start accepting progresses onto the top 50. Okay, so now I had another task. I had to figure out how we were going to implement progresses onto the list. The first subtask was to figure out what the equation would be. Me being me, aka lazy, I decided to just copy whatever pointer crate was doing. So I asked what they did in the DLPS, and a user named Ness provided me with the actual equation, which was super helpful. I'll link it in the description, but basically you get 10% of points for reaching the list percent, up to about 50% of points as your progress increases. Now that I had an equation, I began working in the code. I changed some stuff so that my program could determine whether a certain record was a completion or a progress, and if it was a progress, it used a point of create equation to calculate what the score would be, and boom. My code was now able to handle progress percents. As September came to a close, I would become promoted to a list owner in the most boring way you could possibly think of. The OR list team had its first and only conference, where we discussed a lot of things and exposed a guy for an hour because yeah. And I copy and pasted the entire list change log, which took a ridiculously long time. Think of it as copying and pasting the list levels and the records like I did in July, except somehow worse. But I pulled it off. And uh, after a few visual fixes and some minor extra features, the site, well now, well it was done. So I grabbed all of the files from the REPL.it test site and nervously uploaded them onto the file manager for the actual website. And I was expecting there to be some errors, but well guess what? It worked. Everything went smoothly. So I guess on that day, the site was fully finished, for real, on October 4th. Months worth, months worth of work had finally come to an end. Now that the site was done, people just had to go see it for themselves. And I've gotta say, when people did see it, it seemed that people really liked it, so I think that I did a good job. I'm really proud of the work I put in, and how the site turned out. It was a fantastic journey, learning all of the new things about web development that I did. And now, I rest. Before I go, 
Firstly, any of you guys can make your own sites too if you want. All of my code is open source and it's on the repl.it link in the description. Second, even if you know nothing about something, if it seems interesting to you, try it. You'll never know where it might take you. Case in point, I knew nothing about web development when I started this, but I ended up being an amazing writer. And on that note, thank you for watching.